Yes, well, um, I paint the background uh, very wet in wet. And uh, so it's, it's a habit of mine to paint in this fashion with a very soft sky. So I put lots of water on for the sky and I dob in bits of uh, blue and, and pink. And sometimes they, they mingle, make, make a bit of purple. But the um, foreground, which is the grassy bit, I use lots of different colors, uh, greens, browns, uh, blues, so that it doesn't, so that it's kind of um, loose. Uh, the thing about the uh, seed heads, it's I, I love them because they're very architectural and I love the poppy seeds and I love the cow poppy <laughs> heads. Um, I find those quite exciting things to, to paint. And then um, having having a father who was an avid gardener, having been married to a landscape uh, gardener and horticulturist, I have quite a passion for, for flowers. Hence, well, that's I what know I... when we talked on the phone, Jude, that um, one of the things that I really noticed about this painting was that as you're looking at it, it, it appears to be in layers coming towards you. Yes. And um, we spoke quite a lot about the little white flowers um, in yeah. the foreground and yes. how it, it, it really lifts and makes the whole painting look very 3D. And I wonder if you just sort of, explain why you decided to do it that way and, and what made you, I, I presume right at the end, pop those white flowers in? It's, um, it's the way I paint normally um, because the very far background I've used a very um, diluted Daniel Smith's moon glow to make the seed heads in the very far background and to make them look a little bit misty. So um, as I've come forward in layers, uh, as they've got nearer to the front, the colours have got, well, with the, with the pink poppies were warmer, but the white kind of stands out and brings it right to the forefront. So I was hoping it would give you that feeling of walking through a flowery meadow. Well, it's really worked, Jude. And um, I, th I just, well, as I said at the time when I phoned you, I said I just thought it was stunning. And, you know, you can you. almost... Um, pick those seed heads up and and walk <laughs> through that meadow it's just beautiful um, thank you you chose quite a, a muted color palette didn't you with your greens and your sepias and again yes. um you know what prompted you to to choose the colors that you did uh well trying to to, to stick as far as i could to nature and uh Grass is never really a very brilliant colour. When you look at the grass, it's really quite a mixture of, of different colours. But it's it's the way I paint. Um, I can't really explain to you why I chose them. It's it's just a habit of mine to, to paint in that fashion. Well, they're beautiful and and they and, and the muted colours, the dark greens, the sepias, it really sets off the pinks and the whites and you know, creates such a just such a lovely scene. And and I love the way the seed heads I, I couldn't tell whether they were bulrushes or, or not, but the way they just come right up, don't they? Very architecturally. That's plantain. Plantain, you've okay. Often, you often find it in your lawn <laughs> as, as a weed. <laughs> and Jude, I know from, um, you know, looking at other work of yours, particularly the other one that you have in the exhibition, not the pink poppies, that you're very much influenced by the the outdoor and you know the natural and what what makes you decide to paint a particular scene or a particular flower you know when you're walking through these landscapes what what is it that makes you think right I'm going to, you know that's interesting I'm going to paint that I presume something to do with composition um usually for me it's it's the color because I I have this thing about color and the thing about the flowers is that they make these beautiful shapes and so you can play with the color you can shade it uh and it's it's really just about the shapes but um when i go out into the countryside or a garden um i, I keep my camera with me i don't use a sketchbook i keep my camera with me and everything that appeals to me i i, I take a, a photograph of it so it could be a field of wheat it could be a rose in my garden um so that's what i use for my inspiration really it's it's instead of having a sketchbook, it's my camera. I've always been a bit camera mad. So um, 
various art teachers would, would nag me to use a sketchbook, but it's not how I work. Uh, I've never kept a sketchbook. It's always been my camera. So I download all the pictures onto my, onto my tablet and use that as my sketchbook. And then I'll be browsing through it one day and I think that's what I want to paint. So I'll take the, I'll take the image and um, I'll start doing it on my, on my paper. And then it kind of takes over. I, I don't really plan anything. It, it happens organically almost. I kind of go off into another, into another world when I'm painting flowers. And uh, they kind of happen on their own, if you, if you see what I mean. Well, I, I can't quite believe it because the painting in front of me in the exhibition is beautifully composed. <laughs> and and you've, I, I mean, for me, it's just so carefully thought through, um, <laughs> you know, and really, really clever. In, in terms of the actual painting, did, have you used anything other than um, or a different sort of watercolour medium? Uh, I use Daniel Smith paints almost exclusively. Um, the only, the only, the only non-Daniel Smith paint I use is the white flowers, which I did with gouache, and that was Win Windsor and Newton. You could use anybody's gouache; it wouldn't matter. But all the other paints are da uh, Daniel Smiths. So no, no ink or anything else to create those seed heads. It's just very fine brushwork, no. is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and the the, ex the exploding poppy is done with a, I think it was done with a toothbrush. Really? <laughs> what, and splattered? Yeah, well, yeah, and um, yeah, uh, I, I do that. Sometimes I use um, an ink stick and I scrape it and then add water onto it. But I think, I think they were done with a, with a toothbrush. But if you're sitting in front of a bed of poppies and, and they, you're lucky if you see one explode, it's, it's, uh, it's gorgeous. It doesn't last very long. Well, they only tend to last a day, don't they? The poppy petals, which is, you know, remarkable. Now, what, congratulations. And, and I know that, um, you know, you've got a Tyndall's voucher as well for, for the prize, but it's much more than that. And, and, you know, thank you very much to Tyndall's for sponsoring it and well done for winning it, Jude. In terms you. of your other painting in the exhibition, again, a very, very similar palette that you yeah. used, but, but the... The technique you've used on your poppies is very is much gentler, isn't it? It's it's more yes. transparent. Yes, yes. And I, I wonder if you just tell us a little bit about how you painted that and and what inspired you to do that. Uh, well, I, I have poppies in my garden. Um, there's something about the poppy which really grabs me. I think it's the way um, when you get the poppy with the with the dark colour at the bottom of the petal. Uh, it's great fun to put a very light, uh, transparent wash for the for the petals, and then while it's still wet, to drop some other colour, deeper colour at the base. It would have been um, rose of ultramarine, I think. That was a Daniel Smith I put at the base, and a bit of bit of magenta, uh, and a bit of moon glow for the for the shading um, where the petals have, have kind of turned over. Um, yeah, it's just that I, I love poppies. I probably paint them too often, but I can't help myself. <laughs> oh, so when you put these two paintings in uh, to the selected exhibition, what were your thoughts about them before um, clearly, you know, the, the exhibition started and you, you realised how successful uh, your paintings had been? Well, um, my, my first thing was to get them accepted into the exhibition because that was my first hurdle. In fact, it was my only hurdle because I was so engrossed with trying to get accepted into the exhibition. I didn't even notice that they were giving out prizes or awards. <laughs> that, was, that was a shock. I mean, the, the biggest shock of my life was getting both paintings accepted. Oh. Well, <laughs> because I, I, had entered, I had entered, um, I think it was February last year, I entered two paintings. And one of them was accepted to be um, in the exhibition. And uh, so I was very pleased with that. So this year I'm thinking, oh, maybe I won't get anything accepted. And then they were both accepted. That was very exciting for me. You know, I'm a bit of a newcomer to watercolours. And uh, I wasn't thinking about prizes. I really wasn't. I was really shocked. <laughs> well, that's definitely the best way round, though, isn't it, Jude? You know, to, <laughs> to, to strive to, to having your work in, in a selected exhibition. And then, you know, it's the, the icing on the cake when, you know, your work is clearly appreciated by many, many people. And, um, yes. yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. And, and, and long may that feeling last, Jude. 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, you. You mentioned that you you don't use sketchbooks. I mean, one of the things that I'm trying to do myself is to use sketchbooks more. And, you know, I know that the mobile phone has has really has made a difference to being able to photograph. But you, you implied that you use a proper camera. Yes, I have a Canon. I have a Canon camera. I can't, I can't remember what model number it is. It's got one of these very high um, uh, counts of pixels. So it takes quite I, I was doing I was painting for uh, a company in America. Um, it's a textile company and they they take my designs and they print them onto all sorts of things like um, bedding or towels or curtains things like that and so i had to have a very high powered camera to be able to send them because they blow them up the size of a wall sometimes so it had to be quite exact so i spent quite a lot of money on buying this fancy camera which i only ever used really for them so now i can use it for um these paintings i don't need um such a such a camera really to, uh, using one as a sketchbook um but it is nice to have and i know that if i wanted to blow them up big i could well i think that's a really good point because obviously uh you know with the pandemic and the lockdown and the difficulty of exhibiting live in a physical gallery you know more and more artists are using online facilities and to have a really good camera to take your to take photo, to, to take good photos of your paintings makes a real difference on an online exhibition yes yeah and yes, I, right. I know one of the one of the things that ha, that artists have been quite pleased about with the seaw is that um you know the vandy massey produced a really excellent guide on how to take the best photographs of your paintings using an art using um, a mobile phone whether an iphone or, or, an, or an, another one and i think that's made such a difference to the quality of the artwork that um the judges received this year to have a look at yeah yeah i haven't seen bandy's piece um i should have to go and have a look it's all, it was on the original um exhibition um invitation or call for entry uh, and it's okay. just a click on thing and and i really recommend that you know the artists listening have a look at that because it is very very helpful right okay it's a good tip jude is there anything else about your your paintings in the current exhibition or how you've managed art during you know the last eight months which have been quite challenging for many artists i know um anything else that you wanted to add that i ha we haven't covered um i i'd stopped painting for a couple of years i didn't do anything from um 2018 until the beginning of this year nothing just scribbles rubbish and then um we went into lockdown and i kind of did a lot of drifting as I call it I didn't really do anything and I got to the point where I thought I have to get my hand moving again I, I have to resurrect myself because this is crazy so the painting this painting that you've got up there was the first thing I did to to break the I haven't painted for two years syndrome and um that was that was quite difficult in a sense it was a bit like I I, I had trouble remembering on how to do it how to do you know the habits that i have when i paint it, it was it was difficult bringing it back so that painting um took me a long time to do it, it took me a much longer time than paintings would normally take me because i was uh trying to find my way again i suppose you're a bit rusty oh gosh yes <laughs> <laughs> but there's no, there's no stopping you now jude no <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, many congratulations and um, on, on your behalf, you know, a really big thank you to Tyndall's. Uh, I yes. know many of our artists visit their shops in Cambridge and Ely and uh, buy online. And have you had any thoughts about how you're going to spend your voucher? Oh, it will be on North Daniel Smith Paints, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, well, it's a good adver ad advertisement for you know not only Tyndall's but also Daniel Smith so thank you so much Jude and uh, you, many Mel. congratulations again and a fantastic work and I'm so thrilled that you've got your positivity and your interest back for art and look forward to seeing many more of your paintings. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, you take care Jude. Thanks Mel, you too. Bye. Bye.